Hi guys, welcome back to the new lab. In this week's video, we're going to work on the stepper PCB motor. I received this PCB in early September, but I didn't get a chance to work on it yet. It's not technically going to be the classic stepper motor because it's not going to have any magnetic teeth, so I'm more aiming for a permanent magnet configuration. But my goal for this project is to try micro stepping and get accurate position control. And maybe we can turn this into a clock or a tiny gauge. I designed this two phase PCB stator to have four poles. Each pole has 38 turns that are divided into two layers, which I managed to fit into a 3 cm diameter circle. I got this manufactured at PCB way, and the reason why I decided to get it flexible is to minimize the distance between the two layers and improve the coil's magnetic field. Now, I have to be honest with you, I don't have much experience with micro stepping. I only used it once to drive the super tiny stepper motors. Back then, I used the slow voltage DRV8834 driver module from Polu. Polu? Pololo, I don't know how to say it. I was going to use this same driver for the stepper PCB motor, but one of my Patreons suggested the TMC series. This family of drivers is super popular, especially in 3D printers, because it has ton of features like stall detection, current reduction algorithms, and also a silent stepping mode. I was intrigued by the data sheet, so I decided to design a tiny stepper driver using the low voltage TMC2300. This circuit was designed using Altium Designer, which I believe is the industry standard for PCB design. It offers all the tools needed to design your circuit professionally, but at the same time it is super user friendly, so beginners can instantly get familiar with it. You can also try it for free using the link in the description. Now that you have a clear understanding of how this is going to work, let's start cooking some PCBs. So I made three PCBs with the solder dispensed. This one is perfect, but these other two are. But I think they will still reflow. For reflow, I'm going to test this new hot plate I just got. This is just a hot plate, so there will be zero air. So we want our PCB to stay there for the shortest amount of time. Okay, I think this one is not. Next. Beautiful. Was okay. Okay, so I hope you saw that the bus components started jumping off the PCB. That was a super epic fail. If you have any idea why components started jumping off my PCB, please let me know in the comments. My guess is that it happened because I didn't slowly heat up the PCB, so the heat was instant, and it's not totally recommended to heat up the PCB instantly. But at least we have some good news because the two other boards are okay. The last thing I have to do is just solder some connectors and terminal blocks. Soldering these connectors was a terrible idea because as soon as I tried screwing in the wires inside the terminal block, its pads got ripped off the flexible PCB. Sometimes it's just easy to forget how delicate these flexible PCBs are. I mean their 0.1mm thickness definitely doesn't help with keeping these connectors robust in place. A few minutes later the same thing happened to the other board but with the programming header. To solve this problem, I just decided to solder some more PCBs and not mount these connectors. Something really interesting that I noticed when reflowing these new boards is that the flexible PCB was literally puffing up and bending with temperature. So this might have been the cause of our jumping components accident. In fact, some boards didn't even reflow until I forced them against the plate. Anyways, this is a lesson that I'm going to keep in mind and also try to solve for future projects. Now, let's talk about micro-stepping. 
I started by writing a dummy software to drive the motor with 1.8 micro stepping and it immediately responded and powered up the coils. The only thing missing was the rotor, so I designed and printed this arrow shaped one that had a bearing in the middle and two 5mm diameter and 52 magnets. As soon as I put the rotor on top of this PCB, it started rotating and I was honestly surprised with the result. So I decided to connect the shaft and see what happens, but this time it wasn't working that well because the rotor was skipping some steps. The first problem that I noticed was that the magnets were literally actuating the flexible PCB. I tried to solve this problem with some tape, but steps were still being skipped. So then I decided to design some new rotors using some other magnet shapes I had available. Most of these rotors were also skipping steps. There were also some that were making unequal angular steps and others that couldn't even make a full rotation. I found this a little bit confusing to explain, because in theory it should work. Like I already said, the stator has two phases with four poles, so in order to microstep, the driver is controlling the current in each phase to have two stronger magnetic poles that are assisted by two other weaker ones, which will eventually turn stronger. This visualization also shows us that having the magnets perpendicular to the coils rather than parallel would work much better, and that's what I try to do next. While testing this new rotor idea, I noticed another problem. The shaft had some wobble, which I think was coming from the fact that it was soldered onto the flexible PCB. I guess this is the third and final reason why having this motor made from a flexible PCB was a bad idea. To stop the rotor from wobbling, I designed a 3D printed holder, which I glued into the PCB stator. This time I also mounted two bearings to hold the shaft steady. Mechanically this was much better because it managed to fix all the issues that I mentioned. But the angular positions driven by the motor were still not equal, even for different micro step settings. I did manage to find a mistake in my schematic, which I thought might be affecting the driver. The data sheet specifies that the current sense resistor must be carefully selected, and I was using the wrong one. But when I changed the two resistors to the correct value, the same behavior was observed. This probably means that the motor cannot handle the driver's minimum resolution of 1.8 micro stepping. There is another option in the data sheet where one can change to a lower resolution like 1 fourth, 1 half and full step. But this can only be changed through the driver's single wire UART interface. I spent many hours and even days trying to establish a communication with this driver, but in the end it just wasn't responding to my commands. I'm 100% sure that the CRC is being computed correctly because I verified this with the manufacturer's online calculator. I also checked the data with my scope and it seems to be transmitting correctly on multiple PCBs. So I'm honestly not sure why it's not working. I think the best idea is to get one of their development boards and test it with their software so that maybe I can figure out what I'm doing wrong. There are still many other features of this driver I would like to test, like stall detection. But I'm pretty sure that that will take a little bit more time to get running. So as a last test for this video, I decided to try the other lower micro-stepping settings with the Pololo driver. The half-stepping worked, but it made the rotor shaky and unstable. So the last option was the one fourth, which still skipped some steps. Anyway, I learned a lot from this project and I would definitely love to do a second prototype. Maybe not a flexible one this time. But I have several ideas on how this can be improved and I would also like to test an 8 pole version which should give us better angular resolution. If you're interested in making one of these motors, I have linked all the open source files and next week I will be also having a PCB giveaway on my Patreon which you can become a member of. See you in the next video.